Welcome to the Wild Balance Healthcast, episode number 414, Science and Obesity and You. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week, Dr. Maupin and I are going to be talking about what science says about obesity, and basically that is they don't know what causes it. They thought they knew, and they developed a responses that were sort of codified to someone who was obese and we've been reading a lot of articles about obesity lately and particularly about the damage that comes from fat shaming even by professionals who should and do know better but they all Mm -hmm. fall into the rhythm of saying well if you're obese it's because you eat too much and what we found is that that's not objectively true for everyone so what we are learning and what we believe is that when you have somebody that is dealing with issues of obesity, you have to look at them as an individual and bring all of your knowledge to the table about science and about them to try to find a path forward that will help them stabilize their health, be able to lose weight, and, and live uh, as happy and healthy a life as and they that's, can. And you know, that's what we do at BioBalance. Yes, we, it is. We try to ask enough questions to know the background, the emotional background, the, uh, what people were taught to eat, what their diet is, basically, but how much they exercise. Maybe they're doing the wrong exercise, and we try to help them do the right exercise for them and for their uh, genetics. We also look at the genetic factor. So today, we're going to look at every factor that we know of that can cause obesity, and this is what we do in the office. We look at each factor and, and treat them, Let- and then treat the next thing, and then we go down the list, until we've found the key to our patient's To obesity. manipulate one variable at a time. You mm-hmm. pull one out and say, let's look at this right. issue. Is so this part of your problem? Can we address it? Mm-hmm. One of the, uh, as a counselor, I dealt with a number of clients who suffered with obesity issues mm-hmm. that were what I would call emotionally caused obesity. Mm-hmm. These people were trying to use food. They, they always felt hunger. They always felt empty, empty, no matter how much food they had ingested. Mm-hmm because they were trying to fill an emotional hole in their, in their soul. And they used food as the vehicle for doing that. Because when, when you're a baby, what you learn is whenever you're upset or distressed, somebody puts food in your mouth. You cry, somebody feeds you, oh, he's hungry, she's hungry. When you cry because you're afraid, when you cry because you're sad, moms, good moms, over time, can actually learn to distinguish between their baby's cries and know if the baby's mad or if the baby needs to be changed or if the baby's hungry. Sometimes they just need to cry. Sometimes they need talking. to cry. That's their but, but some moms are not good moms. They're not attuned to their babies or they're not focused on it. They're not doing what they need to or do. Or they're stressed out and they've got a bunch of and other they kids and they can't the pay attention. To the table. It's exactly. not always the mom's fault. It so, could be the situation's fault. And, and so then the baby is looking for something and typically to shut them up, to make them stop crying, they put food in their mouth. So one of the primitive lessons that you learn is whenever you are upset, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're angry, eat. But most of us grow out of that. Most of us do because we find other anchors to attach ourselves to that help us grow and be healthy and stabilize us. Whether it's a teacher or a scout leader or a minister uh, or some activity like sports, we find ways that we can get validation and attention and response to us psychologically that gratifies us. But some of us are stuck in that horrible place where we're trying to get it. In, in, in my business, the terminology is from the object. Usually it's the mother. And they try to get the mother's affirmation, affection, and love. And for whatever reason, she can't give it to them. And so they take ownership of that. It's my fault. I failed in some way. I have to be better, and they internalize all that and ingest, uh, squash those feelings of loneliness, of uh, badness, of unacceptability. They also by eating. They get a high from the food. Yes. When you eat and carby food, when you eat carby food, it gives you a high. It's kind of like a drug. So, so they use that as a drug instead of an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety agent or counseling. 
they use their food as a drug. And, and that's something that has come along for a long time. They've been trained that uh, in their, in their uh, bringing up. But there are also, I have also taken care of women who are basically protecting themselves. They've been abused. Mm -hmm. They're protecting their bodies from anyone touching them because they feel... Especially sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is really common. They, they, get, they get fat so that... They, they're not attractive. They're, they're either not attractive or they feel that's a protection. It, it feels to them like they've got a barrier, and that helps them. So when they lose weight, they feel very upset at and at risk and nervous, and they need counseling while they're losing weight. Those particular patients are going to have to have counseling as they're losing weight so that they don't just put it right back on. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes the emotional abuse is husbands who want their wives to be obese, because that makes them feel like they're not going to lose them. And so they push the patient, my patient, to eat more. But it's a two-edged sword because they do that and then they criticize them. Right, for I know. So they, it, it's a you can't win message. Yeah, there's a lot of you can't win messages in emotional eating and emotional, and emotional hunger. And those are things that we have to look, we try to look at when we're, um, when we're talking to a patient in the beginning of our weight loss program. Well, and, and if you make that assessment that this is emotional abuse or emotional obesity, you can do the mechanical, scientific, physiological treatments mm -hmm. that you offer, but then you recommend go and get some counseling right. from somebody that's skilled with these particular issues because you've got to have that balance. And often even if the spouse isn't, isn't the reason, they're also involved, the partner right. is involved in this eating process. So, so they both have to go to counseling. And in some specific cases, and you and I discussed this before we started to put this material together, um, I, as an example, I had a client that struggled with obesity her entire life. She had a mother that was a dreadful woman, and I knew her, and she and a was happy woman. horrific, and abused this girl emotionally her entire life. The girl kept trying to take care of her mother, please her mother, satisfy her mother, no matter what else was going on in her life. It, she was not successful, although she was. She was a national merit finalist. She was a, a nurse. She was a teacher. But none of her accomplishments filled that hole inside her. We finally reached the conclusion that even that, with uh, lap band surgery, that she would not be able to lose that uh, weight and be healthy until her mother died so that she could quit pushing that rock up the hill like Sisyphus every day and having it roll back on her. So sometimes the object has to go away mm -hmm. before the person can free themselves from those constraints. It's, it's a horrible, difficult thing. It's but a horrible emotional, way to wait. Or, oh, my but God. But to wait for that is yes. awful. Yes. I, so, I, every day it's an uphill fight. So, so if, you have, if you see yourself or hear th this about yourself, if, if you're identifying with what we're saying, then counseling would be part of your treatment. Yes. And then some guidance. But on, counseling alone won't do it. You no. have to have the medical help. You right. have to have the supervision, the support, the training. Because and, there are other things. When, yes. you, when you've gained a certain amount of weight, you metabolically have changed. Right. And then we need to reverse the process, and we have to use medication, diet, and exercise to reverse that. So that's, and it has to be, it has to be, you don't just go out and run a marathon. I mean, that would kill you if you'd done nothing before that. That, you know, you have to slowly increase your exercise. But, but I, I want to talk next about genetic yes. obesity because genetic obesity is real. There are people who, it's not just that one mom fed a lot of junk to another child who fed, who, who actually then fed their children the same way. It's that they have the genes for obesity. We now know the genes for obesity. You can counteract them. It is not an excuse to be obese. And it is something that it, once you know that you have that, that just means you're, you're going to have more difficulty losing weight than your neighbor who's twiggy. Can, can I ask you a question eat the same about amount. that, the genetic parts? Because I'm mm -hmm. not sure I understand all of it. Is it similar to uh, the, the client that has the alcoholic parents that needs to know they're predisposed mm -hmm. for alcoholism yes. and that if they drink alcohol genetically their body processes it differently it's more mm -hmm. damaging to them to, than somebody mm -hmm. that doesn't have that that's true is, is obesity the genetic part of that a, a similar it isn't always but we can test for the genes i mean even 23andme tests for the gene for obesity 
you can test for those genes. And if, if you have them, then what? If you You're have screwed? that, <laughs> if you have them, you have to work harder at it. At least you know it's kind of like knowing that you know you are. You know, you're short. You're just going to have to work harder at. at you're going to have to have pretend to be tall. No, you're going to have to have ladders around your kitchen to get to things. You're yes. going to have to. You know, you're going to have to. Um, if you have ADD, you have to write lists because you know you have ADD. There's good besides Medicaid. Yeah, compensatory yes. strategies. You know that because you have that, you're going to have to do things differently than somebody else. It's. I. I always feel terrible when I'm listening to young people and they're like, well. I eat just the same as my Everybody best friend, yes. and she is so skinny, and I'm not. Yeah. So that kind of thing causes more emotional problems, and it makes it seem like you're behind the eight ball. But you do have a problem that doesn't mean that you're going to always be obese. It means that you're just going to have to try every strategy that we have and look for every other cause and counteract that to get to the ideal weight where you want to be. Does it where mean you you'll feel be hungry healthy. all the time? Genetic, there's several genetic obesities. There's the genetic obesity gene. There's one gene that says I'm always hungry. And I don't, okay. I'm so you glad I don't have that, that gene yes. because when I was pregnant, I was always hungry. I was miserable. It was just like I could not fill that space. Yeah. And, and I was always going <laughs> was, to McDonald's. And I was, itself. yeah, and it yeah. was, you know, so, so I always felt like I was starving. And I hated that feeling. And then there's another, um, and, and it's hard to counteract. And there's another type of obesity. That is, um, I'm never full. So when you eat a meal, you could just keep eating. You don't feel that fullness and that happiness that other people feel when, they're, when they are finished with a meal. The meal's never finished, so then you're going back to the refrigerator. And, and that kind of obesity is something that we, it's very hard to fix. We use medications for that. We have several new medications that work for that type of obesity. But you don't just give everybody that medication. You give the specific person that has that issue, that medication, and it will work. So that's that's what medicine hasn't gotten. So I remember in medicine school, doesn't get the specific was, treatment for the specific yeah. cause of obesity. It's one size fits all. I, I remember in school learning about something called a, a ventromedial hypothalamic lesion. Yeah. Which was a the hunger lesion. switch. It's a brain lesion, mm -hmm. but it was the switch that controls your sense of feeling hungry. And mm -hmm. if you had a tear in that spot, you would always feel hungry. You would never feel full, no matter how much you consume. That's, what a horrible that's, thing to live with. It would be terrible. And that's, that is something that when you see people who've had head injuries, oftentimes that's not genetic. That's, a, that's Damn something it. that happened after you were born and is not in your DNA, but it happened after you were born and it's damaged to your brain. And your hypothalamus, which is right below the gray matter basically and runs your pituitary has is damaged and you just don't have the off switch so that's something that is very so difficult then you're to, have to learn those to compensatory strategies yes. and recognize you're still going to not have the off switch you're going to feel hungry and sometimes lap band helps but with you that. can redirect yourself you can you can find passions like art uh literature exercise mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. you you can find other things to focus on and just turn even though the noise is in the background you can mm -hmm. turn it down enough to survive there's a lot of people who have become amazing artists and writers authors because they've had something like that that really bothered them and they took their passion and they turned it into something positive and that's what we want to give you as as a hope but also we want to give you hope that there are there are answers to these problems and you have to go one by one through them. Next time we're, uh, next week we are going to discuss the other types of causes for obesity and how we handle them. And that has to do with the metabolic disorders and the, um, the different exercises. Some people don't exercise properly for their, uh, their body. We find out fast well, twitch muscles, slow twitch muscles require different kinds of exercise to help you burn calories. So so the type of exercise, the amount of exercise, the type of food, the quality of food, uh, how much you eat, when you eat, and all of those things determine whether you're going to be uh, at the proper weight for, for being healthy. We also now have some medicines that we've never had before that we can use to help regulate your processing of food and your desire for food. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be talking about those things. And, and remember that the, the lesson here is that science has some global assumptions they make about why people are obese. 
And we may have to look at that data and say, well, generally, this is where we start looking at your situation. But we have to individualize it. We have to bring it down to what we know about and can learn about you and how you interact with food and what's driving your reaction to the food. And then we try to develop a personalized program to help you get to a place where you are happy and as healthy as you can be and hopefully to the size and weight that you want to have. So, as always, thank you for listening. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.